Have you been using that pull-down machine at Planet Fitness? Because I see a lot of traps in our future. This month on D&D Minus. Okay, quick recap. Even though it's been mere moments, you're in the tomb of the undying nation. You're trying to reach the top of the pyramid where the prince, the son of King Aserak, has used the heartstring to freeze everyone who was alive at the time of his father's death in a state of undeath. So they're alive, but they can't die. The palace is transformed into a tomb filled with traps and undead guardians. More immediately, you're all really fucked to shit on your spell slots and your health points and stuff. Yes, we are. And Dave is a falcon. <laughs> oh, that's right. Claw? <laughs> Where is everybody on health? Good question. I have 22 of 32. Okay, I'm at 16. I have okay. claw. Yep, yeah, you do. <laughs> You emerge from the Chamber of Blades, Crushing Pillars, and the Fear Rune into a giant room whose floor slopes down to form a pool or a bowl of sorts at the center. Except this pool isn't filled with water. It's filled with hundreds of grasping, chattering, undead skeletons. And as you enter the room, once again, the door disappears behind you and every empty eye socket in the room turns to you, and they begin to attempt to scramble up the slick, curved walls of the pool to get to you. I turn undead. All right. That's gross. <laughs> read, <laughs> read that description for us. As an action, you present your holy symbol, which is the tattoo on my back, and speak a prayer centering the undead, each undead that can see or hear you within 30 feet must take a wisdom saving throw of 14. If the creature fails the saving throw, it is turned for one minute or until it takes any damage. So roll hundreds of saving throws here. <laughs> real quick, Eli. Our entire vacation, I've been rolling yeah. D20s <laughs> for these. Click, click, no, click, I have click, these in click, groups, click. so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll four and we'll see how many skeletons survive. Do we see anything else? Do we see anything on the far side? Does it just slope down? There's there's not a other side of the bowl or anything like that? There's an edge around the whole bowl, but there's no entrances or exits that you can see. Is there a large flush handle? <laughs> <laughs> no, but we'll see how well I roll and then we will we'll see. Excellent. All right. Roll in these four here. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's a good one. Yeah, they did uh, not do well. Away with you. Yep, they all. So, okay, <laughs> this is going to be a this easy room. Short fucking room. They all turned to fucking dust. <laughs> so uh, any dungeon masters that are listening, when you plan an entire encounter around a group of skeletons and you're like, oh, sure, maybe she'll destroy one or two groups of them. <laughs> you should read that spell description carefully. All right. They are dust. Also, maybe you make more than four groups, just to be honest. <laughs> Statistically speaking. All right. So there is a flash of lightning and the laughter of Valkyr booms around the room. And every skeleton in the room explodes into a cloud of dust, <laughs> leaving the room in silence. Well, almost silence. See, now that the skeletons are dust, you can see that at the bottom of the bowl, there is a hole. And if you listen very carefully, you can hear the rattling of bones from far, far below. But it does seem to be growing closer. You also notice that the doorway on the other side of the room has appeared and is open. I guess we're, we're going to go through that, right? Since I dealt with this. Well... Should we send the falcon down the hole just to check? I fly down the hole. 
Dave, do you really want to fly down the hall? Yep. Okay. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm gonna flip on the switch that has the um the garbage disposal. Yeah. <laughs> Just a flock of feathers and Keith's rolling up a new character. Um Wait. make a dexterity saving throw for me, Heath. Me? Yeah. These rash decisions of yours are really That's a one. That's a one. Oh, fun. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wait, use the portent. Use the portent. No. <laughs> Talk for fair. So I want to see what happens. I fly down this blind hole that we know nothing about as a falcon as badly, as undexterously <laughs> as possible. It's not even undexterous. What it is, is you dive, because you're a peregrine falcon, you got to remember. You dive directly into the reaching hands of a skeleton that was making its way up towards the soup bowl. So you are now clasped <laughs> Between the hands of this skeleton, I'm going to say 75 feet below the top of the ladder. <laughs> Guys, will help? Uh, will help? I believe you mean caw, 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 caw. <laughs> caw, help? Caw, help? All right. I have dark vision. I'm going to look down the hole. That's 75 feet. I don't think you could see it. Oh, you're right. I, I can't. I'd like to turn into not a falcon anymore. Oh, all right. <laughs> Here's that roll. First attempt. Dave, roll a D10 for me. If you get an eight, nine, or a 10, you are no longer a falcon. Oh. A D10. Yes, please. Oh, big money. Fuck. <laughs> yes. oh, no. No. He doesn't get another attempt until tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. That's, that is a new sunrise until you can try not to be a falcon again. But, you know, it's a seven. So for just a second, you like, wah, 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 you're, uh, you're a dragonborn. And then shoop, you suck right back into a falcon again. All right. But wait, but wait. If that happened, I feel like he gets out of the hands of the skeleton. Yeah. I feel like I smashed the hands of the skeleton by turning into a dragonborn for a second. You don't sm I think he's surprised enough that he lets go. So what do you do? You're not in combat order. So whatever you want. I'm not a falcon. Yes, I am. But call. <laughs> Caw. Get away from him, baby. Heath? I mean, Dave? Caw? No, Heath, you can still understand Anna. D Dave. <laughs> <laughs> or if you can't, it's unrelated to this person. I was being Dave for a second. Hey, Heath, just say the words I fly out of the fucking drain. Say them. Say them. <laughs> maybe, maybe you fly deeper. <laughs> fly deeper. <laughs> Maybe you get inside the skeleton's head. He's expecting you to try to escape. <laughs> I feel like I fly right at this. I try to knock the skeleton's head off with my speed flying. Ooh, okay. I am going to go get some popcorn. Yeah, get some popcorn. <laughs> Anybody want one? That's, that's the best Foley for our podcast. <laughs> I, what what kind of check is that? I'm going to call that a strength check. Just a straight a bowling up. bowling check. Straight up and down strength check. Give me one second. I want to. I, I'd like to fly charismatically. <laughs> well, you have falcon stats right now, so I don't know what that is. Falcons are pretty charismatic. They are, yeah. Yeah. Generally speaking, you see a falcon. Do you ever hang there, out with like... a falcon? They're, they're <laughs> a fucking delight. So you have a minus three for strength, a plus three for dexterity, a minus one for constitution, a minus four for intelligence. Weird falconist. <laughs> Zero for wisdom and a minus two for charisma. I'd like to um, dexterously do what I said. Okay. But uh, this is a straight up strength check. If it was flying away from him, if it was escaping, then it's dexterity. But since you said fly directly into him, I'm going to go with strength. So roll me a straight D20 and we're going to take away three. I'm going to like push my quarterstaff down into the hole in case he needs. He's like, 75 feet 75. down. I know, I know, I know. I'm just trying to give him a little bit. That's a five. <laughs> so, five. You run, so just let me paint a picture for everyone listening to the podcast. <laughs> you turn into Dave for just a second, back to a falcon. It's enough to make you escape. You do a beautiful loop in the air and right back into the skeleton's hands again. <laughs> like, he didn't even get a chance to reach out. He just sort of went like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then you were back in his hands again. It was like a, like a fly ball. <laughs> Guys, a little help. <laughs> Will help. I'm gonna pack a, a bowl of snogsbane <laughs> and blow some down the pipe. That's seventy feet. We have no idea what the fuck's happening down there. Yeah, you have no idea. It's all good down here. Just come on, everybody, come down. It's fine. I'm still just I'm, one thing. I would have smoked a bowl regardless. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs>
All right, Dave, I'm going to have you take five points of squeezing damage. That's not a thing. You made that up just Eli, now. what is the jump height of a monk? I can't find it. I have something that doubles my jump, but I don't know what my original jump distance is. I'm going to have some of that snog's bane if you're offering. I'm guessing it's not 37 and a half feet. So. It, it might be. You never know. You never know. Can you just run? Come on, instead? 38. <laughs> Can you just use the feet steps? Step your all whole way. Okay. So you can jump a distance equal to your strength score. Oh, what? Okay. But that's not height. That's distance. Yeah. So 14 feet. 14 feet. Yeah. Cool. So not 38. No. Can you not play hopscotch on the way and just come help? <laughs> well, I, I was thinking I could maybe land on the thingy's head and then jump back up. But no, I don't have enough. Even if I did the keys thingy, I wouldn't have enough height. Even right. if he does the Mario triple jump, it's no yeah. help there. Yeah. All right, Dave, try something else. Or the Chris Pratt triple jump, whatever. Sure. <laughs> I'd like to turn into a Dragonborn again. Can't try that again until sunrise. I have a little, I have can a hut a long that rest? I can make. Yeah, exactly. We could, <laughs> you, can, you can't take a long rest in the hands of a skeleton. Sure can. <laughs> Obviously, you're just going to go to sleep and hope things work out. You don't know all the things that have happened to me in my life. Uh, this is hilarious. I can sleep anywhere. He can, yeah. It's true. I've seen you on planes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> should we attack or should we let Dave deal with this? You don't know what's happening. He's 75 feet down a hole. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Do I get to, you said I get to just like do some stuff? Yeah, you get to, I damaged you, so you get to do something else. For all we know, he's getting bird blown or okay. something. <laughs> I'm not getting blown. I'm flying back to you guys. It was a mistake to fly down here. I'm flying back. Do you mean caw? <laughs> yep. Yep. You mean caw. Claw. He's calling you. All right. Are you trying to dexterously escape this time? Yep. Okay. Roll a d20 for me and add three. Would Claw like know his cause? Would he? Yeah. Claw no, speak I his checked. Language? Eric Quokra can't speak to birds. Twelve. 15? Yeah. You escape the skeleton and you fly back up through the hole. A slightly ruffled peregrine falcon comes rising up through the hole. Ooh, somebody has bed head. Okay, we're good. All right, let's go. <laughs> you ready? I'm going to put down my, <laughs> my my flask full of brandy and, we're, and leave. All we can right. go. I'm going to snuff out my bowl. <laughs> well, glad you guys had a fun party while I was doing that. Maybe somebody else go first from now on. <laughs> To be well, fair, just don't there was an open doorway the and, and you <laughs> dived into the hole filled with the At chattering the bones. It has to be something I do it. I don't have impulse control. You have to just, you have to not do that. You have to not say, maybe somebody flies down there because then I'm going to do it. <laughs> Noted. Oh, All right. bird song. All right, let's go. All right. So as you enter the next room, once again, the door vanishes behind you and you're faced with a stone hallway about 50 feet long, the majority of which is taken up with a pit filled with very deadly looking spikes. Show them your back. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have a shot put? Somebody can throw me if you want. No, no. You, I see, I, you say something and then I volunteer. It's going to go badly. He hasn't even finished saying it. I'm going to croak an old Dave. Into the <laughs> okay, I'm actually on board with this. <laughs> Let me finish the description before you croak an old Dave into this spike pit. So there is a narrow wooden beam along either side of the pit that could safely lead you to the other side. Now, Snedrick, don't let me interrupt. You're going to croak an old Dave? <laughs> Slide me down the beam. I don't think I would have. I'm, no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to croak an old Dave. As you're discussing this, Quigley pipes up and says, I'm actually pretty good at this kind of thing. I used to have to sneak around the narrow servants' quarters all the time past my father and brothers. Let me show you. And with that... He presses his back to the wall and begins to scooch down the beam at its side. He makes it about a foot down before the ceiling above him mechanically pulls back to reveal even more spikes in the ceiling, like the ones in the pit, and the seemingly stable beam rockets him upwards towards the spike, propelled by now visible giant springs. Ooh. There is a sickening crunch, and then Quigley reappears next to you and says, that one had a trap too, you guys. That one had a trap too. Hmm. Oh, I wasn't looking. Can you do it again? <laughs> does he naturally respawn next to us like Goldeneye? Like, how does it work? It, it would appear so, yeah. Okay. I believe that's the case. Yeah. 
So how are we going to get past these? I mean, I, I'm going to say, honestly, Crocano and Dave is looking better and better. I? Mm-hmm. It is. I think maybe I just fly ahead again. I mean, I know it, we're, we, it went really badly. I know. Uh, you're just saying calls. All I can hear is call, call. I know. If I'm, you this see is a Heath. button, but you can hear me. If you see a button, maybe press it. Can I read like bird body language? Can I read bird body language? Maybe. No. <laughs> No, you, you didn't take a pickup artist course. As an <laughs> I can talk to you as me, though, outside of the universe, right? Like, yeah, right, right, right. All yeah. I hear is call, call, call. Yeah, you don't have to ignore our friend Teeth. <laughs> so honestly, this is one of those rare instances where I feel like being a falcon is a real advantage. I... Yeah, you don't have to touch anything. Yeah, I think I just fly ahead again. Yeah. So you fly over the pit and to the other side of the room. There's no door there, but you're totally safe. Car safe. <laughs> All right. You guys should just walk down the beams. I'm going to throw some, see if I can throw something up and hit the ceiling just to see if anything comes down if you attach something there. Throw Quigley. So what are you throwing? Uh, I mean, Quigley around. But no, no, a, a torch, an unlit torch. All right. So here's an interesting thing. You throw this torch at the ceiling. It clunks off the ceiling and then it lands. <gasps> Not in amongst the spikes, but strangely on top of them. It's not pierced by the spikes. It just seems to be hovering above them. Ooh, invisible panel. Walk over the spikes. They're fine. Hey, hey, Quigley. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dave. Hey, Quigley. Yeah, yeah. Can you walk over the spikes? Uh, I, I can try. You know... I just want to throw out there that dying does still... It's fine. Nobody cares. I, just do uh, it. The, the, no, <laughs> You're uh, a bird. I don't uh, understand yeah, you. Yeah, he says, ka, ka, ka. I, ka, fuck your face. I understand it would really help us, though. I actually do speak, Bert. <laughs> 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 Quigley, nervously and kind of hesitantly, steps out where your torch is, but finds solid footing. And sure enough, there appears to be some kind of magical, invisible wall over the spikes, and he walks 25, 35, 45, and then all the way to the other side of the hallway. Well, let's do this, everybody. I'm going to follow him. Yeah, I have a feeling something's going to change. I'm going to follow him. Okay. I'm going to follow Bridget, but I'm going to do it, but from like 10, 15 feet back. That's fair. All right. You make it safely across this invisible wall above the spikes. Excellent. So now I'm just standing on the other side like I'm still a little <laughs> uncertain. Is the door open yet? No. Okay. Claude, just get the vaccine and walk across. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do it acrobatically. So much data. All right. So Claw handsprings and does some cartwheels. 23. And oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Why did you bother with you Why? wasted that? Great role. <laughs> yeah. He does some acrobatic across. But yeah, now you're all on the other side. And sure enough, you're, you're a little distracted by Claw's handsprings. But sure enough, when you look behind you, you notice there's another open door. Excellent. Let's go. Well, you didn't even have to show this one your back. <laughs> I didn't even turn, an <laughs> into, turn anything into skeletons or dust. The following chamber is similar in appearance to the one you just passed through. A long stone hallway with a pit in its center. However, instead of being filled with spikes, this pit is much deeper. And about nine feet down, you can see molten lava. Also, instead of convenient beams along the side, there is a rope attached at the center of the ceiling with its end pegged into the wall on your end. Yeah, I fly across. No, I don't fly across. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hey, Quigley? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Quigley. So Quigley, definitely less confident than before, says, I I'm going to try and swing it, right? Try and oh, oh, gosh. No, just walk across the lava. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. He can't suddenly hear. Oh, that's true. He speaks actually, bird. Actually, he did speak bird. He speaks bird, right. <laughs> he speaks bird. So first, he attempts to just step out, hoping there's another invisible platform, but falls into the lava and reappears oh. next to you. Yeah, that's on me. <laughs> Classic. Should have tested I knew that was going to happen because with a hand. last time it was magic. It wouldn't be the same thing again. Do the rope now. <laughs> now he grabs the rope and he swings over the lava, except about halfway through his swing, he hits what appears to be an invisible wall, 
which he promptly slides down into the lava oh. and then reappears very grumpily next to you moments later. Okay. Why did he let go of the rope? Because he slammed into an invisible wall. Okay, do it again, but don't let go. Now you know the wall's there. <laughs> did the rope stop when it hit the invisible wall too? The rope also stopped when he hit the invisible wall. So the rope is now hanging halfway into the lava. We can't even reach it without convincing Dave to go out and get it. I'm glad you asked that because the rope actually magically lifts itself back onto the peg on your side of the wall. Sure. Okay. I'm sure you thought about that before I said it. Sure I'm did. Sure I have it written down figured. right here in my script. You said Under it's... R for rope. <laughs> you said it's 50 feet across, right? 50 feet long, yeah. All right. I'm going to throw one of my ropes, which is also 50 feet long, just uh, like to the side and see if see if there's an opening anywhere. All right. Your rope hits the invisible. Uh, well, gosh, 25 feet. Make a strength check for me to throw a rope 25 feet. Balls. That requires a strength check. Yeah. Do you guys remember how I turned into Tie a falcon? Tie it to a spear. You have eight. that power now. That's an eight. Yeah. So it makes <laughs> like a a three feet out and then <laughs> lands in the lava. Your rope is now in the lava. Bye, rope. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to cast a ray of frost so that the um it, it stays cool and she can pull Ooh. it back out. Ooh. It's a cantrip. That's 90 feet down or something like that. It's like 50. Oh, how you, long? Just, you just, you didn't hold one end of the rope? You I just did. Cut. I did hold one oh. end of it. He said that yeah. it was in the lava now. It's only nine feet down, yeah. It's nine feet down. Okay. Well, never mind then. Can Dave like go to the invisible wall and feel like if it goes all the way down? Like maybe there's like a, it goes like a gap underneath. Wait, did Dave not just like thonk himself in the middle of? <laughs> no, very no, luckily no. for the narrative of this podcast, he decided <laughs> he did not just fly across the okay, hallway. There was like a been... microsecond pause where I just didn't have the heart to be like, Dave dies. <laughs> All right, man, you're going to, you're going to roll your care. You're quickly now. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> you oh, quiggly, no. brother. He is one of the birds that thinks the window is open. Seriously, does anybody remember why, oh. why I'm... <laughs> you killed Carl. This is one of your punishments from Gladys. Oh, <laughs> wait. So if I kill Carl again, does, does can I get everybody else to turn into falcons? <laughs> Maybe should turn you into something better. Or can I become something else that's not that? Possibly. You can't summon Carl, one, because you're a falcon. And two... Wait, wait, wait. No, I can still do magic. No, no you, can't. you can't. Why not? You can't do magic. We went over to this. Because you're a falcon. I don't think that's a thing. Falcons aren't magical. Nothing's magical. That's definitely... No, no, no. Falcons are definitely not magical. Yep. You can fly. They're definitely like, I can prove that with <laughs> science. <laughs> <laughs> well, neither are any of us. Dwarves aren't magical either. They're, <laughs> dwarves aren't. Gnomes, though. Gnomes. Okay, so there's a 70% chance I can do nothing for the, like, at any given episode that we do. Well, not, not, I mean, eventually the day will pass and eventually you'll get another chance to turn back into a falcon. All right, I'm going to investigate the walls, the room, just if there's anything we've missed. Nothing you can see. Okay, I didn't even have to roll that. Wow, there's yeah. just nothing. Okay. Is the end of my rope burnt? Yes. It is burnt. And Quigley just dissolved in the lava earlier. Oh, that's right. Twice. Right, 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 right. Never mind. And I do understand everybody else's language. Yes. Yeah, Falcons can't do that but either, so yeah. <laughs> this, the the not, this world doesn't make sense. None of this adds up. It's like I mean, <laughs> you're, you're Dave trapped in a Falcon's body. It's like it's like Eli's making this shit up as he goes along. If I'm Dave trapped in a falcon's body, I could do magic. No, I checked. Polymorphed creatures can't do magic. And you've technically been polymorphed. I'm I'm only monomorphed. Yeah, it's not Eli's fault. It's <laughs> Gary Gygax's fault. I only morphed once. Okay, you're a podcaster, so you're definitely polymorphed. <laughs> <laughs> could we maybe cast like ice spells All right, well, on the lava? That's a good idea. Oh, yeah. Do I have water? I'll go check the wall while you guys are figuring it out. Yeah, yeah. And just kind of feel around and see if there's a gap. All right, Dave, make an investigation check for me. Uh, roll a d20 minus four. Oh, no, actually, no, because you're you're Dave, and so you don't have to subtract the four. So just make an investigation check. Nine. Niner plus two. Nine total. Nine total. It's a big wall of force. Damn. I'll tell you what, with a nine... It's magic. It's a magical wall of force. It's not like there's a solid piece of glass there or ice or something. Oh, that's helpful. If only we had, if only we had a blunderbuss. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot an arrow at it. 
Nice. It just the arrow pounces off, falls into. I the feel like we shoot magic at it. Lava. I don't. I don't understand the bird. I mean, I could calm its emotions. <laughs> I mean, I got like a lot of icy shit, right? Like I have a flurry of magic snowballs that can erupt from a point that I choose within range. I've got a ray of frost. I have chill. You said touch. you can change the emotions of the wall too? I can calm its emotions. You can calm the emotion. Okay. I am going to use my lava boat submarine <laughs> spell. <laughs> I would read it to you, but everyone's so familiar with that one. I don't uh, think that we really need to. Uh, <laughs> tight, tight like a dish. Can I summon Carl the Public Pecker? No, he died within 24 hours. You have to wait till sunrise. Wasn't that like a month ago? That was it. <laughs> Technically, it was a month ago, but for our time, it was mere moments. What can I do? Uh, you can fly. Yeah, did that. You can caw. You can attack. Check walls. You check, can walls. check walls. I did caw. Mm -hmm. Yep, I checked a wall. Fly over spikes. Yeah. Or you can ram into skeleton heads, theoretically. Honestly, I'm finding you a far more interesting and helpful teammate right now than, than ever before. You could dive faster than any creature on the planet. Yeah. Fun. Okay. Let's try some ice spells. I, on, what, on the lava? Either that or like on the wall itself. Like maybe we, maybe we can... Do something that will show where the wall is. Oh, I have one for freezing rain. Sweet. Cool. Okay, I'm going to try this on the lava. Sure. I'm going to do sleet storm on the lava. All right. Read that spell description for me. Okay. Until the spell ends, it's concentration. Freezing rain and sleet fall in a 20-foot tall cylinder with a 40-foot radius centered on the point you choose within range. The area is heavily obscured and exposed flames in the area are doused. Yeah. Ground in the area is covered with slick ice, making it difficult to rain. When the creature enters the spell's area for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there, it must make a dexterity saving throw. All right. You know what? I like this. I like this. So it wasn't what I had in mind, but okay. the lava cools from the sleet and hardens into Obsidian? rock. 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 Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Rock. Nice. Yeah. It's Cardboard. Rock. <laughs> what did you what, uh, just what, what were you going to say? <laughs> what were the other options? What were you going to say before <laughs> Noah gave you the answer that lava well, is, is I'm rock? I'm just obsidian and Minecraft. I was like I was like pumice and then I was like wait. <laughs> Is pumice a rock? Pumice is an igneous rock, I believe. <laughs> yeah. But then I was like, no, no, no. Maybe it's like a loofah. And it turns out that's just like a guy. <laughs> what? what? A guy? A Loofahs guy? are just little dudes. What? But what has happened just now? Just now, <laughs> I reveal to you that loofahs are not products. That's how they look. Loofahs are but plastic. But they're actually small human beings? Not human beings. They're are little ocean thinking, creatures. Are you thinking sea sponge? But they're male. Get you, a little he, man. He is thinking sea He's sponge. He's thinking sea clearly. sponge. And it's not yeah. a little man. It's a little Jesus. sea sponge. Loofahs are real people. Loofahs, no. loofahs are Unrelated. plastic. You believe a bath product is a living marine <laughs> being loofahs that people are real scrub beings. themselves with. Loofahs are things. They're real beings. Well, we we know that they are things. They are nouns. They're, oh, turns out they're vegetables, <laughs> according to the United, according to the thing. Loofahs are sea sponges. It's a genus of tropical and subtropical vine. In the cucumber family. What? Yeah. Wait. That's not a little guy. That's not Luke. a little guy. <laughs> I meant that in the adorable sense, not in the like actual sense. But little they're, guy. Isn't it weird that they're a thing? What would they, what? would they be a concept? <laughs> oh, they'd Otherwise, be like a construction, like a cloth, right? You'd pick That's a, still I a they, thing. I thought they were made out of like cloth. A synthetic thing, yeah. Yeah, they're not. They're, they're cucumbers. It's, they're it's, not, it's that's plant not life. Correct. Plant life. They're underwater cucumbers. Okay. I think that's just a cucumber. Why the hell are we talking about <laughs> this? That, that is know. a great question. The lava's a rock now. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, because you guys killed all the skeletons too quick, we gotta fill the time with something. <laughs> 
All right, so there's a wall still. I feel like that's the key right now. Well, now you can walk up to it because there's no lava anymore. Right, but that doesn't necessarily solve our problem. I, I flew up to it, and it was impenetrable when we checked moments ago. Well, you rolled a seven. So, okay, so I have, like, all kinds of knowledge of magic and shit. That's sort of my thing. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to investigate the wall with my plus six investigation and all of my knowledge of... Um, Make an arcana check. Yeah, plug. I'm going to do an arcana check, too. Sure. Okay, that's pl- I have a plus six on arcana. Fuck it, I'm going to do one also. 15 for me. Woo! <gasps> <laughs> Everybody yeah. had really good ones. I had a seven. Woo! <laughs> okay. So, Snedrick, you realize that you could just walk through this if you believe. You just gotta you gotta believe and you can walk through it. So dumb. What did the rest of you guys roll? Dave, you think that as well? <laughs> I rolled a 15. I got an 18. Yeah, we rolled high. Yeah, you got an 18 and a 15. With an 18, you can tell that this is the spell Wall of Force. Oh. Do I know how to dispel it? You could tell me what it is because I didn't. I it's didn't Wall of Force. Oh, all right. Well, I would probably know how to do something about that. Mm-hmm. Do I do I know how to do something about that? I was like, I went to a school for this shit. I'm going to knock on it with like, hello, is anybody home? No. What rhythm are you going to knock with? Are you going to do the shave do, and the haircut? Do, 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 right, I'm do. just going to believe yeah. and fly through it and check what's on the other side. You fly <laughs> through totally unharmed. What? what no, fuck? I'm just kidding. You slam into the wall. <laughs> okay. Wait, what? <laughs> you slam into the wall. You said if I believe. No, that's what you perceived with your seven. <laughs> How dare you? Believe harder. Okay, I did be- way better this time. <laughs> you guys keep wasting all these great rolls. I 19 Now I now I believe 19. What happens? <laughs> nope, you used that roll already. No redoing rolls. No, I did I this is new. I did I flew into the wall, I smashed my face, and, and then I and went he was and like, tried well again. that investigation sucked. <laughs> I will do another. All right. Does anybody know how to dispel a wall of force? I probably do, but you know. Yeah, Eli would have to tell us if we do. <laughs> you don't know how to do it. You know it's magic. It's a super duper strong magical spell. So should we start hitting it or blasting it or what? Mr. Bosnick, tear down that wall. He's try- He's telling us over and over again that it's magic. So does anybody have something that like dispels magic like universally? Yeah, I have a bunch of cool stuff that I can't do. That's <laughs> right, right. Anybody helpful. who's not been voluntarily turned into <laughs> oh, a... Oh, I, I legitimately believe I used to have the spell called Dispel Magic and then didn't do it, didn't use it because it didn't fucking come in handy. Snedrick, make a history check for me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, let's see, history. I feel like this is just, could you read back the thing <laughs> from five episodes ago when I talked about how awesome that spell was? That'll be at 18. Snedrick, you cast your mind back to what is now months ago and you remember a note that had a scroll of paper inside and inside that note was a smaller paper which was tightly sealed. That paper is still in your pocket, along with a note that says, this is stupid. How would this even make any sense? I'm just saying that this is stupid. This is what I would write right now or whatever. Use the scroll when you get stuck from grandma or grandpa or whatever. (laughs) Right, right. I remember Bad. You do with, with an eighteen on a history check. You yeah, do. right, right. Even <laughs> even through all the snogs bane. Apparently, I still remember. Who I'm gonna, wrote that that you just read? It was my grandma. What if he'd rolled low? Would we be stuck forever? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> the game would be over. We I don't know. Oh. Guess we'll, yeah, we'd just have to like. Well, no, we would sleep there until Dave could like wake I up. Think, as, uh, I think what God is saying is that we should listen to our episodes. I'm gonna bust out my unsealed scroll. So. That is a scroll of disintegration, which will allow you to cast the spell disintegrate once. That's really convenient. All right. Also, it's should we save it maybe? Or no? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was no. thinking about using it on Dave. He's been annoying the fuck out of it. So that's, no, what if we'd I, already used it? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Hey, y'all, I'm going to, I feel kind of silly now. I smoke a lot of snogs, man. So I, I, I had forgot I have this um, disintegrate magic walls. Spell? Cool. Well, perfect. 
That's so super convenient for right now. Exactly. I would figure. Yeah, exactly. I, I you know, it was, should have occurred to me earlier, but uh, now I remember. So as you read the writing of this spell, the paper burns away, but a beam of power emits from you, cracking through this magical force. The wall of force disintegrates, and the door at the other end of the hallway opens up. Perfect. I mean, you you did the thing with the skill. I, I could have. I was going to disintegrate them, and then you did it. So I was like, I'll wait. I didn't until need the to bear a spell slot. Thing. Turns out, yeah. Oh right? yeah, right. The next chamber you step into <laughs> is just much. carrying on, just doggedly, <laughs> just fuck these people I work with. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> the next chamber you step into is much larger. It's a circular silo that extends up above your heads to a metal grate, which, from the look of it, leads to the outside of the tomb. Below you, beneath the metal grate that makes up the floor, is a bubbling pool of a slick, oily-looking liquid that gives off noxious, dangerous-smelling fumes that surround you. At the far side of the room is a very strange statue. It's made of a hard gray rock and is of a rotund knight in a strange circular set of armor carrying a dangerous-looking steel sword. When Quigley enters the room and sees it, he freezes and says, It's, um... It's the cannonball. What's, What's the, the cannonball? cannonball? Hey, Quigley, you want to say a little bit more about that? <laughs> Sorry, um, Sir Greyhold of the High Court. The king didn't go to war very often, but when he did, Sir Greyhold was always at the front. Legend is, at the siege of the Bloody Keep, Greyhold actually shot himself out of a cannon so that he could be used to breach the walls first. It's just a silly story, though. Cool. Can you just like say all the information you have all, right away? <laughs> About all things forever, my to, whole yeah. life? <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'll just start at like my birth and then I'll just go through. Just, and no, just... Whenever it pertains to something that we're obviously dealing with, just to say the whole thing. Wow, you really do speak Baird. He says, I did a great job giving you guys information. <laughs> all right. So all I'm saying is if it becomes useful for him to pass us information, for Dave to pass us information, we're going through quickly. Damn it. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> and as you are chatting amongst yourselves, you hear a grinding noise. Ah, crap. And you hear from between stone lips, Actually, Quigley, says the statue, coming to life and rising to its full and substantial height. It's true. Had the king cast a stone skin spell and then fire me from a trebuchet. You should have seen the demon king's face when I came rolling into the middle of his courtroom. Perhaps that's why the prince's spell turned me into this instead of a skeleton, huh? I don't know how many times the prince demanded to hear that story when he was a boy. To him, I was always the cannonball, and now I suppose I really am. Well, I've been waiting hundreds of years for someone to walk through that door. So why don't you let me show you out with a bang? Everybody, roll initiative for me. Hey, everybody, just jumping into once again. Thank you for listening to our show. It has been a wonderful month. I know we haven't been gone on anything except for Skeptic Crap, but we took a month off this month and it's been really wonderful and we miss you and we're excited to be getting back to work as of this recording. Uh, this recording was actually the first time we all got together in a month and as you can tell, it was a ton of fun. We love doing this and we love that you enjoy listening to it. A little bit of business. If you haven't given us a review yet on iTunes or wherever you listen to this podcast, please do that. Not only does it send me a nice little message, I get to read what you think of the show, but it also boosts us up in the rankings so more people can find the show and enjoy the show. If you're loving the show, why not support us over at patreon.com forward slash DND minus all spelled out. You get access to our short game as well as some behind the scenes mini talk back things with me dungeon master's corner i think i've done three or four of them at this point i don't remember but i did i did some and you also get to help contribute to the show our dungeon master level patrons are contributing all kinds of cool stuff to the podcast and you can do that over at patreon.com forward slash d and d minus one last thing i want to give a shout out to kevin 
Kevin, who, who I didn't ask permission to use his last name, so I'm going to be safe and say Kevin made some absolutely awesome minis of our characters, as well as Carl the Bug of Pegacorn, and mailed them to us, and they are fabulous. And uh, you can check that out on our Twitter, at P-I-A-T pod, or on our Facebook. So if you just look up the name of any of our shows, our social media guy, Tim, is amazing about sharing that stuff. And if you make something, if you draw our characters or do a thing that has to do with our show, just send us a tweet or an email or something, and we'll feature, we'll blast it out there so that people can see how awesome you are like Kevin. So big thanks to Kevin once again for making those and sending them out. They are, again, when you see them, you'll see. They are truly so awesome, and we're, we're incredibly grateful that he did that for us. All right. Next episode will be out next month. I hope you're enjoying the show. Tell your friends about it. Let's get back to the adventure. All right, roll those initiatives for me. 14 plus 4, 18. 12. 16. Exactly the same as last time. Nat 20 plus yeah. 3. Woo! Woo! Ooh, ooh. All righty. We really should have rested. When? In that tent. We could do it now. <laughs> yeah. As the guy comes towards you with a sword? I feel like the guy's got a sword. <laughs> we could go back through one yeah. door. <laughs> from the from the falling asleep in a skeleton's hand school of enemy management. <laughs> if we pop up a tent, it would just be rude. For, I feel like he would stop. Wait, but nothing can actually hit her, harm you in the tent. No, you definitely can't. It's just a tent. Is it just a tent? I think it's just a tent. <laughs> I think it's just a tent. <laughs> you have a tent. Did you think it was like a force field tent? I don't know. Magic tent. There's something magical magic, about it. I have a magic tent. Wait. But it's just a tent, right? It's not. The like, skeleton I think it's... takes out a scroll that he's got. He's like, <laughs> listen. I have so much shit, it would take me a second to find it. But I have some kind of... I don't kind, think I we have... use it anyways. I think While a guy comes towards you with a giant steel sword? Probably yeah. not. <laughs> I think we're about to get smacked. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but but yeah, no, it, it is magical and it would keep him out. But I don't wouldn't have time to cast it at this point. That's so. amazing. If a tent just like pops into existence, he's at least going to be like, huh? <laughs> yeah, right. No, that'll that'll slow him down. But I could also just, you know, cast a spell that would slow him down. That's fair. Nedrick just starts using Leopold's tiny tent as Captain America's <laughs> shield for the rest of the <laughs> podcast. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna cast hideous laughter. Mm. <laughs> a creature of your choice that you can see within range perceives everything as hilariously funny and falls into fits of laughter if this spell affects it. The target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or fall prone, becoming incapacitated and unable to stand up for the duration. Huh. It's like a cog disc spell. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Well, now they'll never join us for a Patreon only. <laughs> yeah, <guest right>? episode. <laughs> a creature with an intelligence score of four or less isn't affected. I don't know. This guy volunteered to be in a trebuchet. Maybe this isn't going to work. <laughs> At the end of each of his turns and each time it takes damage, the target can make another wisdom saving throw. The target has advantage on the saving throw if it's triggered by damage. On a success, the spell ends. All right. Okay, so this is a concentration spell. Yes. Which means you can't cast other spells while you're doing it. No. He needs to roll a 14 wisdom saving throw, right? Yes. All righty. He is not particularly wise. Yet he rolled an 18. Ah, okay. Shit. I almost used my portent. I had an 8. <laughs> Didn't. Why can't we see your rolls? Claw, you're up next. Does anybody have any pretty big fire spells? Yeah, I, I do. I really do. I have some <laughs> great ones. Oh, yeah, man. I have Agoniz Agonizer's Scorcher, right? Yes. Oh, I have a really good one for stone creatures. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. Well, the reason I ask is I'm going to throw my grease grenade and I was thinking that if we covered him in grease and then lit him on fire it would at least cause like prolonged damage. Oh, maybe. I like that idea. It's going to be a minute before I can throw some fire on the motherfucker but I can throw some fire on the motherfucker. I will also remind you that there's a pool of oily liquid underneath you and there are vapors and fumes <gasps> oh, all <shit>. around you. <laughs> okay. Maybe no fire. 
It's a good reminder, Eli. <laughs> he is made of a smooth gray stone and has a giant steel sword. Oh, shit. He can just ignite himself. He could? Why? With his steel sword. Why can that? But there's no, there's no fire anywhere, is there? I mean, he could make a spark. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, you mean if we cover him with grease and then he swings his sword and a spark flies? He's already covered in grease. He's already covered in kerosene. Well, he's like, we're all standing in a pool of oil, right? Yeah, yeah, there's a pool of oil underneath the grate where you're standing, and the vapors are like everywhere in this room. And it's the vapors that are flammable, actually. It's not the, <laughs> it's not the liquid itself. So, so we're covered in vapor. Right, I'd, I'd essentially blow the whole place up. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, sounds about right, honestly. I do not have fire stuff. Why don't we just blow the whole pace up and run back through the door? Because the door disappears when we walk into the Dang each room okay. like a Turned Zelda us. dungeon. Yeah. Is the cannonball guy with us? He's the one we're fighting. Uh, no, we are fighting yeah, him. Yeah, we're fighting cannonball. Heath? I thought he was a good guy. We don't know yet. He hasn't attacked yet. He is yet. a good guy, but <laughs> he got turned into a bad guy by the... Everybody princess. Everybody here is turned. It was like a person, a good guy in the castle. Noah, can you calm his emotions? Only if I can get him to grab the bun bun of soothing. Okay. <laughs> hey, buddy. You mean ka ka ka? Ka 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 bun bun ka. But I don't have a turn until like way later. Yeah, yeah. You, like, whose turn went. is it? Claus. It's me. I'm just going to do a regular double unarmed strike. And what is this whole thing about two attacks, Eli, that you texted me about? You have two, two, two attacks now. Every time you take the attack action, Text? you get to what? do two attacks. Does that mean four unarmed strikes? Ip claw. Yes. So that is four strikes. Ip man. Man of a thousand punches. Okay. So I'm going to punch him in the wrist that is holding the sword. And then I'm going to punch him in the nuts it's made as of I rock. You're going to punch this I have rock. to do something. I, I don't have any. stones are stone. He punched a skeleton officially. Like he punched a skeleton real bad. Okay. All right. Remember? I mean, if I hit him with a wooden staff, I feel like the staff's just going to break. <laughs> but your fists, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so roll 4d20 for me. Right. I just want to make sure. I, so I'm going to punch him in the wrist, and then I'm going to punch him in the nuts as I try and dash under his leg. Is he tall enough I can dash under his legs? You definitely can't dash under his legs okay. without doing some key point dexterity saving throw shit. Okay. You don't just get to work. You don't get to be like, yeah, no, I'm going to do four attacks. <laughs> I also do a backflip off his back and tie him up in a bunch of spider webs which I shoot out of my dick hole. I, you should roll for that stuff. I, I, absolutely. That's, yeah. that's the problem with this game is that you can't do that. You can roll for it. I was wondering if I could get behind him with enough, if we were close enough that I could attack and get behind him. You could do a movement thing and then if you're willing to take an attack of opportunity, I'll let you try to move behind him. I'll just do four attacks. Okay. All right. You should do three nut punches like a speed bag. <laughs> right? Like one in the wrist and then boom, boom, boom. Right. Like, boom, boom, boom. Da -da -dum. Yeah. <laughs> left, right, left. Sounds good to me. Let's do it. Roll those four D20s for me. All right. 24, 26. 22. 22. You're crushing it. <laughs> that's, a, that's a really good roll 26, 24, 22, 22 Those were all impossible <laughs> That's wild How You're rolling a d20? I, I get plus 7 Oh, okay Yep, those all hit So you are going to roll 4d6 plus 4 I'd like Claude to roll for me not to be a falcon <laughs> <laughs> 2 plus 4, so that's 16 total 32 total damage. 32 total damage. So you run in, you speed bag the nuts, you aim for the wrist, and you land solid blows each of those times. However, because he is made out of this gray soft stone, sure. that will only do 16 damage. Ooh, he used a number. But the good news is I'm right in front of him. <laughs> you are. You are right in front of him. <laughs> and I punched him in the balls. <laughs> Dave, you're up next. You're a falcon. Let's hope none of his attacks are shoot spider webs out of his dick hole. <laughs> <laughs> you're in a terrible spot for that. Do falcons have a dick hole? Question. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I really hate how much we've arbitrated bird cloacas on this podcast. <laughs> where where did we land on that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do not have a dick hole with spider webs. Fine, fine. Just claw him in the eyes. So I've brought up the Peregrine Falcon 5E creature, and I learned some things. First of all, I would like to passively perceive for 12. 
<laughs> no. Yeah. So with a <laughs> passive perception of 12, and, and I mentioned it lightly before when Claw was suggesting maybe using some fire spells, the gas that surrounds you is flammable. But I'll give you this with the passive perception of 12. The stone that he is made of is flint. Interesting. Fuck, we should have let him on okay, fire. So, we get, <laughs> so the spark thing that Bridget was talking about might be useful here. No, not useful. Not useful. Not to us. Yeah, I don't think Leonid's tiny hut is fireproof. A, a, a spark would not be helpful to anybody in this room. None of us are fireproof. Except Quegley. Okay. Um, so it's made of flint. Um, I also have acrobatics plus five. So just passively, I'd like, I'm doing acrobatics while I think about this. <laughs> sweet, sweet flips and shit. Like 11 <laughs> passive actions. I'm doing sweet flips in the air. Also, I have keen sight. I have advantage on wisdom perception checks that rely on sight. I would just like to passively ha use my keen sight. Anything? We look below the grate. See if there's anything you can see below I'm the grate. I'm looking everywhere that we can see. <laughs> yeah. We've we've already gone over all the things you can see with your okay. falconness. All right. Keenly, though? Very keenly. Attack him. Okay. <laughs> do I have room to do a dive? No. I would like to use my talons for a melee attack. Uh, roll that uh, roll that dice for me. Does he have eyes? Does the stone thingy have eyes? Uh, no. Not that you could see. Not flesh eyes, at least. Yeah. Not that we can see. <laughs> Interesting. He's wearing shades. <laughs> He's still in shades. Uh, he was in the military. A helmet. He's in a helmet. He's got mirror shades. What am I rolling? A D20. Yeah. The flint thing implies that we're supposed to light him on fire. No, fire. it implies that he can light himself on fire at any time and blow us all to hell. It implies that we don't want to hit him with a metal object. We don't want to shoot an arrow into okay. him or hit him with a sword. Yeah. Okay. What about freezing him or that lightning, I'm lightning him? I'm going to try to shatter him at my next turn. That's an 18 to hit. 18. That'll hit. Roll a D4 for me. Four. Four plus three, that's seven. So you will do three damage because he is made out of stone. And a half. Three and a half. <laughs> I'll, you know what? I'll call it four damage. Yeah. Four damage. All right, Bridget, you are up. I am going to shatter him. <laughs> Ooh. A sudden loud ringing noise, painfully intense, erupts from the point of your choice within range. Each creature in the 10-foot radius sphere centered on the point must make a constitution saving throw. A creature takes... 3d8 thunder damage on a failed save or half as much damage on a successful one. A creature made of inorganic material such as stone, crystal, or metal. It has disadvantage on that saving throw. Oh, fuck yeah. I'm going to do it <laughs> behind him. The point is behind him. So he is in it. But Claw, who is right in front of him, I assume, is not in it. But like, yeah, nine and a half feet behind All right. Him. Yeah. No, that would work. Not nine and a half feet. About five feet behind him because these are squares of five. I don't know how big he is. Yeah, yeah exactly. I like this plan. And Claw, you can deal with it if it gets you. Let's be honest. All right. So he needs to make a constitution saving throw? With disadvantage. With disadvantage. With I disadvantage. All right. That is a 19. No. And with a, disadvantage. With disadvantage, yep. And an eight. I'm going to use my portent. Oh. And an eight. All right, an eight. There you go. Okay. Roll that damage. That's 17. 17. Well, that wasn't worth using a portent for. Fuck. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 17 damage. That's pretty good. Quigley is up next. <laughs> What's he going to do? Poor Quigley. He hasn't gotten to be a part of any fights yet. He's super excited. He <laughs> is going to attempt Ever to in his life. grapple <laughs> the cannonball. He's going to grapple? Yeah, he's going to try and grab him. Is he going to give us a quick speech about Brazilian jiu-jitsu first? <laughs> Wrist control. Do you guys listen to Joe Rogan? <laughs> <laughs> now oh, you're all I'm glad I've it. died as many times as I have. <laughs> Did you know he lost his $100 million contract because he's an <laughs> asshole who lies? <laughs> I'll stay quiet if you give us $100 million, Spotify. I'll stay quiet <laughs> for fucking ever. Just for the record. All right. Contested roll between Quigley and... Okay. Quigley coming in with the good roll. All right. Woo! So Quigley gets a firm grip 
Oh, uh, no, but he, okay. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> for a moment, it looks like Quigley has the giant stone statue in his grasp for some reason, but the uh, clay golem throws him aside, actually over the edge of the metal grating, and he dissolves in the pool of acid below you and then pops into existence next to you and says, I almost got him that time. Do you see? I, I had him for like yeah, a little really second. Close. That was yeah, awesome. Good job. Yep. The bird said I did a great job and congratulations. So wait, is acid below us now? <laughs> it appears to be acid, yeah. It's acid oil with noxious fumes? Acid oil with noxious fumes, that's correct. It's fantasy acid. Fantasy <laughs> acid. <laughs> My acid. It's a vinaigrette, <laughs> one might say. A vinaigrette down there. It's it's the pulling this out of my acid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He is going to say, oh, but now nah, I gave him a southern accent. Oh, y'all are so much faster than a big, clumsy stone statue like me. Let's turn the speed up a bit. And he rubs his hands together and they glow with a magic. Did you change your voice from earlier when you nope, gave us that nope. speech? I had this voice earlier. I Did you? remember. Yep. Absolutely. I felt like it was different. No, I turned the edit. I had you this speak voice. bird? <laughs> Fuck. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that bird said. I just decided to volunteer that information. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that is his turn. There's sort of a blue glow, and that is his turn. Hmm. He sped things up. Is what he did. You're gonna find out. Oh, shit. Did he cast haste on himself? You'll find out. <laughs> Snedrick, you're <Okay>. up. <laughs> I'm talking to the group, not to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna um You could calm him. Yeah, throw the bunny at him. See what happens. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna do the trick. Okay, wait. Palmer than you are. <laughs> <laughs> I say you blow the place up. I know that you would say that because you love the <laughs> chaos. You know, you're like the Joker burning the pile of money or something. But we could roll really well and get out of it. <laughs> you could also fucking die. Yeah, I I we like could. my character. I don't want to roll another one. But then we could just, you know, start over and create new characters. You guys get the impression <laughs> that Claw's an anti-vaxxer based on all this stuff? I, a little. <laughs> Definitely get a little bit of an anti-vaxxer vibe. Right? Claw. Yeah. All right, so I am going to do my chill touch. Fantastic. And you're doing that at cantrip, right? You're not doing it at like a higher level. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Fantastic. Roll that hit dice for me. That's a 12. That will not hit. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, you said it like it hit. <laughs> but it didn't. He's No, he's just excited that I managed to roll the correct Yeah, dice. I was excited. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. Just supporting, I get it. supporting no That's a D20 12, though. <laughs> That's yeah. a dice moving on a surface. Yeah. <laughs> Claw, you're up. Okay. I am going to stunning strike him. Ooh. But I really think he's going to pass because he's got probably got really high constitution. But I'm going to try it anyways. And I also think that I am going... No one else is close to him. I'm the only one close to him, right? Uh, that is correct. I guess Quigley... No, no, because he died and and reappeared next to us. <laughs> mm -hmm. By the way, I just want to say real quick, Angelo, if you could do it the next time you do a a D and D square, if you could do one for Eli going ooh when somebody ooh. decides what move they're gonna make, I, think, I feel like that would be a useful one to have. It's true. Just patronizing us. Anyways, I'm going. To <laughs> he, he made that noise because a D twenty got rolled moments yeah, right, ago. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Guys, I've been really lonely on vacation, okay? <laughs> Just excited you have to legally hang out with me again. Random number <laughs> generator. Ooh. And it took my random number generator away. Day four of vacation. Okay. So I'm going to do a stunning strike, and then I'm also going to spend a key point and cast patient defense. And hopefully I will dodge whatever he throws at me. All right. Now. Claw, as you remember, your stunning strike comes with a price. So you draw your mind back to learning with Alex. And as the steam of the shower <laughs> wafted around you, you utter what shower thought? Good, I have a whole list. Life is the only game where your max HP decreases as you level up. Ooh. <laughs> 
I did not come up with that. We will give the credit where it is due. Some person on Reddit named Bayou Bomber Girl 97. Yikes. Oh, <laughs> dear. Yikes. That was real terroristy. <laughs> we'll cut that part out. Yeah. <laughs> She's in jail right now, but it's yeah. nice she made it onto our D&D podcast. <laughs> and catfished Morgan, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You spend your last two key points. So roll those two D20s because you get two attacks. Ooh. Okay. There, you see, I did it that time. Ooh. It's kind of fun. Thank you. Anytime anything happens. I don't, ooh. Oh, 19 and 17. 19 and 17. Those will both hit, which means he needs to make a constitution saving throw, right? Of DC 11. DC 11. Does make that saving throw, yeah. Damn it. And he says, you know, I never thought of it like that. That's really cool. That's really, really cool. That gives me a momentary, but not full pause. <laughs> Roll that damage for me. 13 in total. 13 in total, which will be rounded down to a seven. Because he is made out of rocks. And then you also did patient defense, which means you are allowed to take the dodge action as a bonus action. And hopefully he attacks me. Is that what you're going to do? That is what I'm going to do. All right. You all, you take the dodge action and for everyone's reminder because I, I don't think we've actually done like a a dodge action in a while but a dodge action gives him disadvantage when attacking you in this coming turn okay I think it's me Dave, Dave. Right? oh nope yeah. Dave you are up next damn it okay what does it mean challenge one out of four fifty XP if he kills you it's a one quarter challenge rating and he will gain 50 XP. I don't know what any of that means. Useless. Moving on. <laughs> it says languages M dash. Yeah, you speak M dash. Okay. Sounds like a programming language. Can he <laughs> yeah, program? It does. He can. This, this Falcon can program the fuck. It's actually really impressive. Okay. I write a sweet Python thing with some useful notes. No, you speak M dash, not Python. Oh, right. That would be silly. I write a sweet m dash thing the libraries are a mess though <laughs> and i'd like to uh roll a um i don't know investigation check okay now a lot of people have corrected me on this during battle all those checks they are actually your action i will let you do it but it will be your action for your turn that's what i thought yeah you were right anna and i was incorrect no that's not what i'm doing okay i can't passively perceive I've told you everything you've already that you've passively, passively perceived. perceived. <laughs> Nothing has changed. Nothing's changed. Can can okay. I actively passively perceive? <laughs> yeah. All right. Right now we kind of got to focus on just killing the thing. Yeah. So I guess I'll go fuck myself and try to do that talent thing again that did three points of damage, even though I rolled perfectly. Wait. Try like Arcana or something. Maybe there's maybe he's like magic in a special way. Oh, maybe you could distract or something. I can. Uh, oh wait, wait, wait. I can do. Oh, you could buzz in his ear. That's annoying. I can do a bunch of acrobatics, and I feel like I'm gonna acrobatically just be all up in his face. Okay, you're gonna acrobatically be all up in his face. Yep. Distractively. Roll a d20 for me and add five. I'm doing that right now. 25, 20 plus five. Mm -hmm. Rolling. That's a 12. Yeah, it doesn't do shit. <laughs> what? You just like do some air cartwheels and he's like, whatever. That's pretty cool. First he said that cool thing and then your other bird did like a little air cartwheel. That's cool. I feel like if, if we lose this fight, he's going to invite us to dinner at least. <laughs> yeah. He's, we've done a lot. That was pretty cool, right? Right. Cool. I actually, I already admitted that I speak bird. So yeah, yeah. that is pretty cool. No, I was trying to trick you again into <laughs> disconfirming that. All right. Confirming that. All right. Uh, now it's been done. I will uh, tell and attack you again. No, oh, dang. <laughs> Here I thought you and I were gonna, just going to be good friends. <laughs> nope. Do a little flip for me. All right. Roll a D20. Roll a D20. <laughs> <laughs> the lines blur. That's a 12. That's a 12. That will not hit. Are you sure? Yeah. So he's so amused by your thing that he sort of chuckles and just ducks out of your way of your talon. And he is up. And he says, all right, y'all. In the words of DMX, here comes the boom. Wow. And he 
pulls out his sword and oh, strikes wow. himself yeah. across the back. Hey, really quick, what's your, <laughs> what's your favorite DMX song? <laughs> oh, it's too late. It's too late. You're about to find out in the hardest possible way. Doesn't feel too late. Yeah. <laughs> it feels just on time. All right. Everybody make a oh, no. dexterity saving throw for me. I get advantage because of dodge. You do get advantage. Rip my ability to do anything but heal. Ocho. 15. 11. Hey, I rolled the same thing twice with advantage. <laughs> 10. Use the first one. <laughs> okay, that is an 11. So... Fuck! <laughs> who hit an 11? I had 15. I hit an 11! So... If you missed, you are going to take. I think I'm dead. Not for long. Bazinga. 25 damage if you missed. Ugh. And 13 damage if you did not miss. So I am dead. Are you dead or are you just knocked out? Knocked, knocked out. out. Okay. How would he be dead? What like what does that mean? What what's the distinction? If your entire life below zero is taken away in a single attack, you're dead. Oh, if you go to negative your life? Negative your max hit points. Oh, yeah. okay. In, in a single hit. Uh, everyone else, give yourself your damage. Yeah, I'm almost knocked out. All right, well, rip my ability to do anything but heal. And as his bonus action... Oh, crap. He is going to do... Magic stones. His slam <laughs> attack... Damn it. On those never do anything. The Falcon. He says, I thought you were doing fun acrobatics because we liked each other. I feel like you've changed it again now. That's yeah. Three different I'll find voices. It. I'll find it. Rolled a a natural 20. Jesus. Wow. So shit. That means he rolls four D10 plus five. I think everybody's dead. Well, no, no just just no. uh Dave, but oh, okay. That's like 27 points that I'm about to get. Yeah. We really should have used that tent. Not bad. Not bad. It is a one, a five, a five, and a one. So 12 points of damage. Oh, uh, 17 points of damage. Yeah. So I'm, I'm uh, knocked out. Are you sure I would have been hit by that? Because I was a falcon that was flying around <laughs> far Yeah, he away. lit the entire room on fire. <laughs> he didn't kill himself with that? No, he's made out of flint. Mm. Oh, okay. Snedrick, you're up. Assuming you're still standing. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I have nine whole hit points. Fuck yeah, you do. Use them well. I am going to do the Aura of Vitality spell. Wait, that's uh, so little. Healing energy radiates from you in an aura within a 30-foot radius until the spell ends. The aura moves with you, centered on you. You can use a bonus action to cause one creature in the aura, including you, to regain 2d6 hit points. Ooh. That's good. Yeah. So I'm going to do that and use my last nice third level spell slot. And that's your turn, right? Well, and then I can use a bonus action to regain two D6 hit points. That's right. And I'm going to do that for Claw. Wait, how, how bad off are you, Bridget? I've got over half my hit points. I'm dead? Yeah, so is, so is Claw. And he's sorry, he's a little more useful at the than moment. A falcon. <laughs> no. than a falcon. Than a, a falcon. Can he fly? Kind of. I, no. <laughs> Gliding, really. I can fly. You can do damage. So I'm going to give you back eight hit points, Claw. Okay. Fantastic. And remind me, how long is a turn? I thought it was like six seconds. Six seconds, yeah. Okay. All right. So that'll heal somebody every turn and you can still take actions? Yes. yes it will be a bonus action. Sweet. All right. Ooh. Claw, you are up. Oh. Wait, when was I supposed to go? Didn't you go after Dave? No. No, all she did was shatter the first time. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think she went. Did you not go after Dave? No, I didn't go after Dave. Oh. All right. All right. So we'd have to we'd have to dial back his attack and start yeah. all over, probably. <laughs> so before that happened. No, well, I'm not going back in time. I get Bridget two. was not paying attention. I get two. <laughs> Bridget was no, not paying I was attention. I was no, I was literally like, okay, I've got this one ready for whenever it's my turn again. Well, it's your turn now, <laughs> is what it is. Nice save. <laughs> I think she deserves an inspiration point for that. Though. Agreed. 
<laughs> you get inspiration just when I forget it's your turn. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what I think. I think it's, it's not like, like when the kindergarten teacher get. gets drunk, everyone gets to watch Reading Rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, kids, we're all watching the movie today. <laughs> Because apparently my divorce is finalized. <laughs> I am going to inflict wounds. 16. Yeah. 16. That will hit. Yep. All right. 24 damage. 24 damage. What kind of damage? That's magic damage? That's magic damage. Oh, that'll do it. He's dead? That will do it. Yes. What? Oh, he is dead. Damn it. Well, then I used my spell just to get him back to 12. <laughs> <laughs> what can I tell you? I should be better at remembering when it's someone's turn and when it's not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Because then if I, I would have I wouldn't even have used Yeah, because then he wouldn't yeah. have done the spell and bit the, beat the shit out of everybody. I think we can all agree that I should have remembered it was Bridget's <laughs> turn. But unless we want to record 18 <laughs> minutes of podcast all over again. <laughs> I think we can all agree what happened, happened. I think we should all get an inspiration. <laughs> this is not how inspiration works. You knock over a roll up. Well, hey, this is not how fucking initiative works either, man. I mean, that's that's be how it's okay. Works. I should have I should have said something before Snedrick's turn. You should have. Yes, exactly. I, I agree that we should also blame Anna for my very obvious mistake. <laughs> I think the entire next episode should be like time variance authority stuff where <laughs> they come <laughs> through. We go clean up the timeline. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Bridget steps forward and her magic crackles out from her. And even though he has no flesh to speak of, these giant cracks in the stone that make him up start to appear. And the cannonball, Sir Greyhound, looks at Quigley, who has reappeared behind you, and says, So... This is how it ends. Not with a bang, but with a whimper. <laughs> Look at me quoting poetry. Perhaps I've got a little salter in me after all. Don't we all, Quigley? And with that, he shatters into dust. So, okay, so wait. Now, here's the thing is that my spell lasts up to a minute. Mm -hmm. And so I still have 54 seconds where every six seconds I can heal everybody like 2d6 worth of day. I mm -hmm. should be able to roll that nine more times. Do it. Okay. All right. We pan away from the tomb of the Undying Nation as Snedrick deals out healing like playing cards as quickly as he can before a minute expires. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved. Hey, speaking of Goldeneye, did you hear that they were going to put N64 games on Switch? Oh, yeah, I, I did. did. Oh, yeah. my God. I'm so That's excited. Was in my head. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to derail Mario. everything there. And That's you pretty. would think that if they're going to do Banjo-Kazooie, which is a rare game, they will also do Goldeneye, which is a rare game. But I guess we will see. Is Goldeneye yeah. a rare game? They're going to make yeah. you wait for it. Yeah. I have I have yeah. Goldeneye. All my friends had Goldeneye. You Goldeneye guys was come... like the reason to get an N64. Yeah. yeah. You should come to my place. We could all play Goldeneye together. Yeah. I mean, yes. Conker's Bad Fur Day was the reason to get it. Very well, good. Well, I mean, but Smash I Brothers was the reason, but originally, at first, it was Goldeneye. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bad Mario Party Mario, was Mario my Kart reason, 64. But sure. Kart 64 is amazing. This is definitely Kart, after the Kart beep. All this 64 after was the reason. reason. Okay. <laughs> Fantasy <laughs> N64. This is, yeah, I... Call. Call. <laughs> I mean, Chris Pratt cart 64. <laughs> <laughs>